Okay. Now, um, there's still one more thing that we haven't figured out about the triangle. Um, there's one thing we haven't figured out, which is the length of the opposite side. We still don't know how long this opposite side is. Um, now, at this point, we have a lot of options. There's a bunch of different ways we could find the opposite side. One thing we could do is we could use the Pythagorean theorem. We haven't discussed the Pythagorean theorem yet in these videos, but if you know the Pythagorean theorem, you could use it to find the opposite side. Uh, however, um, that's not what is usually done in the situation, so we're not going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, something else that we could do uh, is uh, now we could use the tangent. Remember that originally the tangent was useless because the tangent was referring to the opposite and the adjacent sides, and we didn't know either of those. When we didn't know either the opposite or the adjacent sides, it was useless to use the tangent. But now that we know the adjacent side, we could use the tangent to find the opposite side. That would be fine, um, but actually that's not the way people usually solve this type of problem either. Uh, why don't people usually solve this type of problem like that? Well, usually in this type of situation, people try to figure out the unknown information just from the information that was originally given. We're going to try to figure out um, the unknowns from what was originally given. Well, we were not originally given this 4.3, so usually people don't use that to figure out the opposite side. You could, but that's not what people usually do. Instead, to be more conventional, we're going to try to figure out the opposite side just using the hypotenuse. Remember, I put this asterisk in here to remind myself that that was the information I was originally given. Okay, so we could use the tangent here, but that's not what people usually do. So we'll do what people usually do. They want to continue to use this original information, which is the hypotenuse. So we need to use the information about the hypotenuse to find the opposite side. Which trig function deals with the hypotenuse and the opposite side? Well, that's the sine. The sine deals with opposite and hypotenuse. So, so let's write down our sine. sine 30 degrees. We could work with 60 degrees, but we've decided to focus on the original angle, the 30 degrees. Uh, and we know that's the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Now, what should I plug in for the opposite side? Well, we don't know the opposite side, so we have to leave that as a variable. What should we plug in for the hypotenuse? Well, that was the information we were originally given, 5. So we can plug in 5 for the hypotenuse. Now we have one equation and one unknown. The unknown is the opposite side, so we should use algebra to solve for the opposite side. The first thing that would be nice is to get rid of this fraction. Well, we can cross multiply. First of all, let's get a fraction on both sides by putting this over 1. And then cross multiplication means multiplying diagonally. 1 times the opposite side is one of the diagonal multiplications, and the other diagonal multiplication is 5 times the sine of 30. Now, 1 times the opposite side is just the length of the opposite side, so that 1 drops out. And now we can figure out 5 times the sine of 30. Now, you, know, you, don't, you don't actually have to figure this out in two separate steps. Um, you don't have to figure out the sine of 30 and then multiply it by 5. You can just type this all in one fell swoop into a scientific calculator. If you have a decent scientific calculator, you can just type in 5 times the sine of 30, and it will give you the correct answer in just one step. Uh, it's actually a, a good habit to try to start learning how to use your calculator to calculate things in one step, rather than breaking them up into a bunch of separate steps. So if you type into your calculator 5 times the sine of 30, you would get 2.5. So the length of the opposite side is 2.5. Anytime you figure something out, it's a good idea to build that information into your diagram. So we've built that information into our diagram. We can see that the asterisks are telling us the information we knew originally. I, and we figured out a bunch of things that we didn't know originally. Originally, we didn't know this angle, and we didn't know these two sides. But we've used uh, trigonometry now to figure those out. Well, again, I hope that you're a little bit impressed by how useful trigonometry was to us here. Remember that when we started, all we knew was this one angle and this one side. And now we know all the angles and all the sides by using SOHCAHTOA, sine, cosine, and uh, possibly for some problems, tangent. Uh, so now you can start to see why uh, people learned about trigonometry in the first place, because it lets you figure stuff out. Even if you're only given one side and one angle of a right triangle, once you know trigonometry, you can use that to figure out everything else about the triangle. You can figure out all the other sides and all the other angles. Again, let me remind you that what I have on the board here is not necessarily the only ways that we could have figured out this information. 
Uh, there's usually a bunch of different ways that you can figure stuff out about triangles. Uh, and if you used other ways, that's okay. However, um, the ways that I put on the board are really what people usually do. These are what you would see in your textbook and what your instructor would use. So actually at this point, it's probably a good idea to start learning how to use these conventional approaches. Um, so for example, uh, we could have used the Pythagorean theorem on this problem, but that's not how it would conventionally be done. So that's not what we're gonna do. Um, and we could have used tangent for this problem um, at, at eventually, but that's not how this would, origin, uh, would usually be done. Um, so we're just going to do this as it would usually be done. The way that people conventionally do this is they figure out all the unknown information just using the information they were originally given, not using the information that they figured out along the way. So that's how we're going to learn how to solve these types of problems. If this type of uh, problem gave you any difficulty, please try to imitate exactly the notation that I'm using. Uh, for example, I definitely recommend that you use asterisks to indicate the angle that you're focusing on. Here we knew two angles, but you have to decide which angle you're focusing on. So use an asterisk to indicate the angle that you're focusing on. Um, and also we decided to try to figure everything out using the hypotenuse. So I put an asterisk in there to remind myself that I was trying to use the hypotenuse. Also, it's a good idea to write the general equation before you start plugging in. Don't just write this equation, start by writing the general equation and then plug in. Also, um, it's a good idea to keep labeling which side is adjacent, opposite, and the hypotenuse. Keep doing that labeling until uh, the problems are very easy for you. Uh, again, eventually you'll get to the point where you don't need all this notation, but if these problems are still giving you difficulty, the way to master the material more quickly is to use this type of careful notation.